Nowadays, everyone's trying to work more fish into their diets. So I thought I would tackle one of my personal favorites. I'm Danny Spees and today's 101 ingredient is salmon. Nutritionally speaking, salmon has a lot to offer. It's a concentrated source of complete protein, it's packed with vitamins and minerals, and it has high levels of those sometimes hard to find omega-3 fatty acids. Now, I know you guys know the ones. These are those fats that can help reduce inflammation in the body, lower cholesterol levels, and improve brain function. When it comes to buying salmon, you've got two big arenas to choose from. There's wild salmon, and there's farm-raised salmon. Now, wild salmon is just that. It's salmon that's caught right from the ocean living in its natural habitat. Any wild salmon that you see at the market is gonna be from the Pacific Coast. A few examples of this would be wild king salmon, sockeye salmon, and coho salmon. Wild salmon gets its deep coral color from eating a natural diet of crustacean and krill right at the bottom of the ocean. It's also this diet that provides the salmon with its rich supply of omega-3 fatty acids. Farm-raised salmon, on the other hand, are salmon that are raised in large pens out in the ocean, and they're fed a diet of protein-rich fish pellets. Now, because they have a very different lifestyle than the wild salmon, they also have a different nutritional profile. For starters, they don't get nearly as much exercise, so they have a higher fat content. Higher fat content means lower protein content. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You're thinking, hey, Danny, higher fat content, isn't that a good thing? These are the fats we want to be getting in our diet, right? Well, not exactly. Here's the catch. Even though the farm-raised salmon have a higher overall fat content, they actually have lower levels of the omega-3 fatty acids. And that's simply because they're not getting the same amount of exercise and they're not eating the same diet as the wild salmon. Remember, it was the natural diet of the wild salmon that gave it the high level of the omega-3s and its deep, rich coral color. As a matter of fact, the farm-raised salmon, the flesh is actually gray. And so it's injected with a little bit of artificial coloring to give it that pinkish orange hue you're used to seeing at the grocery store. If you take a look at them side by side, you can really see what I'm talking about. Labeling facts. Now, whenever you see the word Pacific or Alaskan, you can be pretty sure that you're buying yourself some wild salmon. If you see Atlantic or Norwegian, you can be pretty certain that you're buying farm-raised salmon. Now, cost is also an indicator because the farm-raised salmon is gonna be quite a bit less expensive than the wild salmon. And many people would argue that you're better off indulging in the wild salmon less often than buying the less expensive farm-raised salmon more often. And don't forget about canned salmon. I'm telling you guys, this is one of the best deals in the grocery store. You get all the benefits of wild salmon without breaking the budget. When you're buying salmon, you wanna look for a nice shiny filet that's not slimy. And in order to know how fresh it is, all you have to do is smell it. You want your salmon to have a nice briny smell, just like the ocean. If it smells fishy or if it has a bad odor, chances are it's bad. So you definitely wanna trust your smelling instincts. Once you get your salmon home, you wanna store it all the way in the back of the fridge where it's the coldest, and then be sure you use it within a day or two. One of the simplest and most delicious ways to make salmon is broiled. So I'm just gonna leave you guys with this basic cooking technique. You wanna take either a cast iron or a stainless steel skillet and preheat it under the broiler. So I'm gonna place my pan about six to eight inches underneath the broiler and give it about 10 minutes to heat through. Once your pan is heated through, you're gonna remove it from the oven, being sure to use a towel or an oven mitt. The handle is gonna be super hot, so be sure to protect yourself. Place your salmon skin side down in the pan and season with a little salt and pepper. Then the pan goes back under the broiler for about six to eight minutes or until the salmon is cooked through. I like my salmon a little bit pink in the center. Your salmon is going to continue to cook for another couple minutes in the pan and once it flakes nice and easily with your fork, ooh, just like that, you know it's ready to go. I like to top mine with a little fresh lemon juice. Broiled salmon is great hot, cold, or at room temperature. So needless to say, make a little extra because it is the perfect leftover. I'm Danny Spees and I'll see you next time with another Ingredient 101. And helps with uh, to improve 